Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I want to talk to you about the difference between American and European electric bicycles and answer the question of whether or not one is really better than the other. Spoiler alert, the answer is yes, sort of. So I'm here in Tallinn, Estonia today, which by the way, let me cut to camera two here. I've avoided this for a long time, but I have finally opened an Instagram. If you wanna follow along and see some of my e-bike adventures here in Europe as I travel around or just anywhere, feel free to follow me there. You're welcome to see a little more behind the scenes of these kinds of trips and these things that I do. All right, back to the regularly scheduled programming. So I'm here in Tallinn, Estonia today, visiting Ampler Bikes, and I've already done a complete video and an article on electric, doing a tour of their factory. So if you wanna see how they build their e-bikes, go check that out, I'll put a link down below. But as I've been riding around today, I've been really thinking about the difference between what it's like when I ride electric bikes here in Europe and when I'm riding electric bikes in the US. And it's a very different type of riding and a very different type of e-bike. Now many of you already know that there's a very different power and speed level that you'll find between most American electric bikes and European electric bikes. And when I say American electric bikes, because 99.9% .9 of them are built in China or somewhere in Asia, I'm not really talking about American made bikes, but really bikes built for the American electric bike market. Now in the US, you'll usually find bikes that go up to a maximum of 28 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour. Those are usually class three e-bikes. And then there are bikes that have lower speed limits like 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers per hour. In Europe though, you'll find much slower e-bikes. There is a law across the European Union that was adopted about 10 years ago in 2012 that limited the power of electric bikes that are sold here in Europe to 250 watts and limited the speed to 25 kilometers per hour. That's about 15 and a half miles per hour. So if you compare that to US e-bikes, they're allowed to have up to 750 watts, which is equivalent to about one horsepower. So over here, we've got a much smaller 250 watt motor, about a third of a horsepower. Now, when I say that you cannot have electric bikes over 250 watts or 25 kilometers per hour here in Europe, that's not exactly true. You can, and they do sell them. It's just that they're not considered to be electric bicycles under the law. They're actually classified as motorcycles or mopeds, and that means that you have to have a license plate on the back, registration, perhaps insurance. It's a whole nother thing. So you can find those, but they make up a tiny, tiny percentage of the e-bike market here because of the simple fact that they're not really considered to be electric bikes anymore. Now for a while, there were people that were de-restricting electric bikes here in Europe. So you could take a, you know, like a Bosch or a Broza motor or something, and there were little tricks you could do to increase the speed and get it going faster than 25 kilometers per hour or 15 miles per hour. But most companies have cracked down on that now and there are ways that they can lock you out or they've just closed some of the loopholes or the back doors that allowed people to do some of those things. So you don't see very much de-restricting anymore. However, that's not as big of an issue as you might think. Now, I know if you're an American watching this and you hear 250 watts, you're like, wow, how can you do anything with 250 watts? So the important thing to know is that when I say a 250 watt motor, yes, that's technically the legal limit here in Europe, but very few companies are actually limiting their e-bikes to 250 watts. Most of the time, there's just a sticker on the motor that says 250. In actuality, the real power is often something in the 400 to 600 watt range. Companies don't advertise this number because you know it's kind of a, uh, an open secret, but most of the time you're not gonna get a true 250 watt motor. You're gonna have more power than that. For that reason though, very few companies in Europe advertise a power number at all anymore. It's rare to find 250 watts in the marketing literature. Instead, what they advertise is a torque number. So you'll see that a motor is listed as 60 Newton meters or 80 Newton meters, or if it's really powerful, 90 Newton meters. That torque is now a better analog for comparing what the true power of these motors is. But that also brings me to another point, is that it's not just about power anymore. Lots of times we simplify it and we say, oh, you know, a more powerful e-bike is faster, it's gonna climb hills better. Those two things do generally go along with higher power, they correlate, but it's not as simple as that. 
For one thing, here in Europe, a lot more e-bikes are mid-drives. You know, in the United States, we really like our low-cost bikes, our budget bikes, and that usually means a hub motor. Here in Europe, a lot of people are replacing cars with bikes. They're using it basically like a family car, and that means they'll invest more. They'll get a nicer bike, and that often goes along with a mid-drive motor. With mid-drives, though, that means that you can actually use the gears on your bike. Now, this is not a great example because this one actually happens to be a hub motor bike. It is a premium electric bike. It's just a very nice hub motor bike, and it's also got a belt drive, so it's a single speed. But a lot of European e-bikes are going to have a mid-drive motor, and they're going to use a gear set in the back. And when you have multiple gears, that means you can drop down into a lower gear when you're climbing a hill, and you can get even more torque. Mid-drive motors already have a lot of torque, but when you drop into a low gear, you really increase that torque figure, and you can take a bike that is lower power, you know, maybe it's like 400 watts or so, and you can still climb a hill very well. Now, if we break that down to the physics real quick, I won't go too deep into this, but basically what is power? Power is the ability to do work. More power means you can do more work quickly, or in the same amount of time you can do more work. If you think of work in a physics sense, it's basically like climbing a hill for an e-bike. Right? So if you have more power, yeah, you can climb that hill faster. But even a low power bike can still climb a hill if it has enough torque. And that's exactly what downshifting and using your mid-drive motor through your lower gears does, is it takes the smaller amount of power you may be given and it really amplifies the torque so you can still climb a good hill. That's why you don't see Europeans stuck at the bottom of a hill with an e-bike, because even if they have less power, they can still get up there because they've got those mid-drive motors and the ability to take a lot of torque out of those motors. Ultimately, there's also just a cultural difference here, right? Like, you know, I talked about when I'm in the US, I'm using an e-bike differently. Lots of times it's for leisure, it's for cruising, it's for either heading down the beach path or for, you know, driving fast down the roads. In Europe, an electric bike is often more a tool. It's for getting somewhere. It's an alternative form of transportation. And when that's the case, you might not need it to be like a race car like we have in the US. You know, a comfortable 15 miles an hour might be fine for your commute especially when you're sticking to the bike lanes and you're with a lot of other bicyclists that are also doing 15-ish miles per hour. Perhaps it's a slower pace of life here. Perhaps it's because everything looks just a little prettier. I don't know, but for some reason, people seem pretty happy doing 25 kilometers an hour and it, it doesn't seem to bother them that much. I know for myself personally, sure, I definitely like having a class three e-bike in the US, something that can go 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers per hour. But to be honest, the more I ride around here in Europe, the more I ride these EU legal e-bikes with a 25 kilometer an hour or 15 mile an hour speed limit, the more I'm enjoying them. It's just a fun, you know, relaxing way to get around. And even though I would surely want to go twice as fast, I don't feel that limited by it, especially when I have good cycling infrastructure around me and I'm comfortable doing 15 miles an hour. At the end of the day, the question of are American e-bikes better because they go faster or have more power is really sort of a personal choice. If I could choose between the two types of e-bikes, sure, of course I'm gonna choose the higher power one, the faster one. Does that make it better? Not necessarily, especially when you consider that a lot of European e-bikes are designed to be used much more frequently and perhaps are actually better quality e-bikes. So it's really kind of comparing apples and oranges at a certain point. They're two different types of bikes for two different use cases and two different types of riders. All right, that's all I've got for you here today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. The randomly selected commenter who's going to win a free copy of one of my books is... Fab 1150. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my latest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the next randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time.